For more reaction to President Obama's proposals, we go to Mark Calabria, Director of Financial Regulation Studies at the Cato Institute. He joins us from Washington to discuss why he thinks those proposals are uninformed and misguided. Mark, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Always good to see you. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, all glad to be here. Mark, uh, President Obama said today, never again will the American taxpayer be held hostage by a bank that is too big to fail. The president saying that while the financial system is far stronger today than it was a year ago, he did say it's still operating under the same rules that led to its near collapse. Do those rules not need to be changed? Oh, I very much think we need to change the rules of the game. Uh, you know, but we need to get rid of too big to fail where the president's own proposals make too big to fail law of the land. He seems to misunderstand why these banks are so big to begin with. One of the reasons is they can borrow at a rate far below that of their competitors because their creditors, their debt people who lend money to them, believe they're going to be bailed out. We need to end that. Uh, to say that the, uh, these banks held the taxpayer hostage is just ridiculous. It was the decision of policymakers, congressmen and senators, at the time, Senator like Obama himself, who voted to spend public money to bail out these banks. That was the mistake. So I think rather than trying to misdirect the anger of the American public, which was certainly heard on Tuesday, toward the banks, Obama and other Washington insiders need to look at themselves and ask, why are they spending taxpayer money bailing out banks to begin with? That's what we need to end, and we need to end too big to fail. Right. Um, and I question, you know, if the president really wants to break up things that are too big, where are Freddie and Fannie yeah. in this plan? You know, we will spend four times as much bailing out Fannie and Freddie as we will the banks. Yet there's no plan to fix them. There's no plan to break them up. So it certainly seems like this is just really political grandstanding rather than a real plan to protect the taxpayer. But, Mark, there are particulars the president announced today, namely this ban on prop trading. You also have had a growing drumbeat toward a return of some form of Glass-Steagall, of course, separating the retail and investment banks. Isn't that a step in somewhat of a right direction? I think it's, I have to disagree. I think it's completely misguided. Bear, Lehman, they weren't commercial banks. They didn't have commercial bank activities. I mean, Goldman, they don't have a commercial bank activity. Uh, even if you look at the institutions that did mix commercial banks and trading, like Wachovia, Wachovia did not get into trouble from its investment banking activities. It got in trouble because it made bad real estate loans. I cannot find one single example of where some institution took insured deposits and used it to gamble on the stock market. Where's the example? Where does this make a difference? All this seems to be is some misdirection. It's something that never made a difference to begin with. So, in, you know, if you want to say that these institutions are too big to fail, nobody thought Bear was too big to fail. Certainly nobody thought that long-term capital management, the hedge fund years ago, was too big. So what's the size criteria? Anybody? Everybody? Now, Mark, let's the look at Goldman is, Sachs, is, which shattered earnings sure. estimates this morning. Prop trading could greatly impact Goldman Sachs. It reaped more than 90 percent, according to my research here at Bloomberg, of its pre-tax earnings last year from trading in so-called principal investments. And that's part, part of my point. Goldman Sachs does not have a commercial bank uh, subsidiary. If you break up commercial banking from investment banking, that does nothing to Goldman because they don't have a commercial bank to lose. So some of this just really seems beside the, beside the point. It's like, OK, well, we're going to talk about how bad Wall Street is, yet we're going to come up with solutions that don't do anything to Wall Street. You know, it's like my favorite, the Consumer Finance Product Agency they keep talking about that exempts Goldman and exempts all of Wall Street. It's all this misdirection of we're really angry at Wall Street, so we're going to punish other people because of it. You know, if they really want to take on Goldman and they really want to take on Wall Street, what they need to do is they need to stop the Fed from lending everybody and their brother money at zero. I mean, there's no, anybody can make a ton of money if the Fed's going to lend it to you at zero and you can go buy treasuries at three, three and a half. It's a, you know, the thing is, it's not like Wall Street has gone back into all this risky trading. What they're doing is making an immense amount of money because of the gain, the carry trade that the Federal Reserve has set up for them. You know, if we start raising rates now at a reasonable rate, we will start squeezing the spread that the uh, Goldman and everybody else is making Mark, we at have, the expense of the rest of us. Mark, I'm sorry. We have about 30 seconds left. I want to ask you because sure. you, you talked about basically some window dressing that we're seeing because the politicians, as you say, are partly to blame. Well, they're going to have to be the ones who are going to fix this. This plan is subject to approval by Congress. How do you think that's going to pan out? 
And I don't, I don't think it's going to pan out very well. I mean, I, you know, I, I spent uh, seven years working to staff on the banking committee, and quite honestly, I do not have a lot of faith for the, some of the very people who got us into this crisis to get us out. Uh, I think ultimately what's going to get watered down, so it's very easy for the president to go on TV and, 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 and shake a fist. Ultimately, this is going to have to be worked out by Congress. It will right. likely get watered down by Congress, and right. it's likely we're not going to see a real solution. And, Mark, we're going to have to leave it there. Mark Calabria, Director of Financial Regulation Studies at the Cato Institute. Mark, thanks.